Welcome back to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. I am your co-host, Joshua Meekins, and I am joined by my fantastic, amazing co-host, Amira Smith. Amira, how are you feeling? I'm feeling fantastic, Josh. You know, it's been a long time <laughs> yeah. since we get an episode out. You know, life be life in. <laughs> life absolutely been life in. It. And, and bills be billing, and we be having to do things to pay the bills. Absolutely. And, absolutely. Um, so I guess this episode, you know, now we're in July 2024. Yeah, I think we missed some years. <laughs> I guess we're going to call this episode The Catch-Up. Yeah, The Catch-Up. You know, Amir and I, Disruptors in the Culture, has been our baby for years. You guys have seen us start the podcast. You've seen us do Roots Picnic. Then you saw us disappear for a bit because we had a lot of things going on. Um, and in that time, we want to give you all a little catch-up about what we've been doing. Um, and I think the thing that really initially made us disappear is that we shot a movie, which people don't think people know about. I completely forgot to put that in the docket, too. But we shot... Our first um, feature film, Old Head the Movie, which was shot in Philly, independent project, raised the money ourselves, um, had a premiere. Shout out to the Apex platform for hosting us for our distribution. And that took up so much of our time um, for all my independent sure. filmmakers out there. Out of that joint is crazy to, like, to even work through that. Um, Amira came and worked on a project with us, helped us handle our marketing, get our, ourselves together. And like, really, that was that was a lot. I I completely almost forgot about that. Yeah, it's it's crazy because um, all this time, you know, with disruptors, like my involvement with Mike J Media, for the most depth of it was I was kind of like a non official consultant here and there, like yeah. on like script supervision and things like that, and then. I officially signed on to the team. Mm -hmm. I guess was that the beginning of, or like the end of 2022? Yeah, that was the end of 2022. I officially signed on, and then that was you know getting old head to to the screen and all the finishing stuff and like the mark, like we said, the marketing push and everything. And so I guess that's um. Do you do you feel like when we did old head? I mean, well, you were already like lead producer, yeah, um, practical producer on it, like the filming process, which was what was that 2021. Yeah, it's what I, well, we've been working on it since 2020. No, y'all shot at 2022. No, the years are gonna kill me because the reason the reason why it's confusing for me is that I think we Tony had their first script in 2020 during COVID. Yeah. The second time we got it, the second time we went to go talk about it was when we first tried to start production, and then rest in peace, Seam Seam passed away. So that was like that put a halt for a little bit. Then we had to rewrite the script. So I want to say that was like 2022 is when we actually shot it. It came out 2023. Yeah, yep, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, because I remember we did, um, if you guys have been following us, we, at June 2022, we did the podcast stage at the Roots Picnic, we mm -hmm. had Cootie and Chike, and I remember everything was like a buildup. We were, mm -hmm. you know, doing episodes, putting them out, and it was like, oh, Roots Picnic here, let's do that. We did a couple more episodes with um, Armani White, with Dapa, mm -hmm. with Around the Way Curls podcast, mm -hmm. and then it was like, all right, we got to get the movie ready to yeah. get to. And there was, you know, people, the filmmakers out there were really, because then it's like you're formatting the film to be shown in a theater, which mm -hmm. is a different format than when you bring it to a streamer, which is, a mm -hmm. you know, so it was just so many, all the finishing things to get it ready to be seen um, to the public. Um, and then the marketing stuff and, yep. you know, marketing materials and getting the word out and doing, and then I was, I produced the casting crew screening and the mm -hmm. VIP screening. So it was like, we went right into that mode and it was kind of like all hands on deck. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it lived on apex for three months. Yep. Yep. And then it was just, you know, distribution and it's filming boy, filmmaking is something else. It's hard. It is hard. <laughs> we're, we're even now trying to relaunch it. So we're, we're working on, you know, getting it, the audio remastered, um, showing it another screening to do, uh, to get some other producers and possibly uh, uh, another streaming company to host it. So like, this is, it's a process. So just to let y'all know that that was a substantial thing that happened in the background that we've been doing. But other than that too, life has been life in. And yeah. I think I talked about this on the around the way curls episode, but for those who don't know, I became a father in the meantime. So I had a, a beautiful baby girl who is now wanting some change and being a father and a creative is not an easy thing. But, but 
let's be clear. Like Josh, Josh is Josh. Do the things the right way. <laughs> he a father Absolutely. and a husband and a husband. Yes, to Josh a fantastic got married. Wife. Yeah, he got married and had a baby. So uh-huh. it's not like oh, he just had a baby out here. Yeah. So yeah, and I know that first parent situation. That all Man. that adjustment. People don't talk about it enough. I think, you know, or I have to, one, give all the credit to my wife, you know, amazing balance that she allows me to have being a creative and at the same time holding on the fort when I'm not around. And then in those moments when, you know, she she needs assistance too, you know, I got to step up, be, be, be dad, make sure I'm doing all the dad things. But, you know, it's great to really have that balance. But I, I, every time I talk about like being a, a father and a creative, it brings me back to this conversation I had with one of my friends in college who is like, we used to talk about like getting to your goals and really figuring out like, do you get to your goals first, then start a family? Or can you start a family and get to your goals? And um, she always was big on like, you know, you can do both. Like you got to figure out the balance and make, and make it work. And I used to be like super anti, like I got to hit my goals first and then I can actually do it. So I always think about like, I'm in that position now where it's like, you know, being a creative while having a family at the same time is, it's not an easy thing. Listen, that's, um, we had this conversation mm-hmm. just all personally in, um, one of our favorite filmmakers told a, uh, a family member of mine mm-hmm. when she asked, she said, oh, you have such a great body of work and all these films and, you know, you raised children, you did all these things. Um, do you think that's possible for a woman filmmaker? Mm-hmm. And he looked at her and he said, no, I have a wife. So it's kind of like, oh, you know, it's, it's thinking about the balance of it. But the, the truth is, is that women filmmakers, there's some, mm-hmm. but as far as in director, producer, multi hyphenates, I really got to do a little more research on who has a family and has put out an incredible body of work. Like one of my, um, who I'm always inspired by, like Sally Richardson, she has the family, she's had the, she has the whole package, you know, the incredible career. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is, it's hard, boy. And I mean, I feel like it's interesting because I'm like, how they talk about like millennials and then Gen Z and stuff. I'm like, is is, is this thing getting harder? Is this getting (laughs) easier or more accessible? Like so much streaming platform, so many things, but it also at the same time, is it getting harder because the cost of living is so high that it's kind of like who has time and resources to chase this? Like we filmmaking is begging for money over and over to get something done. You know, you're constantly dipping into a well and getting investors and getting, you know, trying to get the project across the finish line. And it's like Mm -hmm. the cost of living is high. It's like, boy, is this like, as far as the quality, you know, like quality work and it's like, man, this boy, It's also the time too. like you really have to put forth so much effort into doing these things. A lot of times you don't have a team. You're not like the big organizations are working with teams of 50. Everybody's doing their specific jobs. You're an independent filmmaker. It's like, you know, there's five of you and you're playing. You're wearing 20 hats. You know, you're you're, you're the sound director. uh, You're um, chief engineer. You're lead producer. You're UPM. Like you're every position throughout the entire phase. That burnout hits. So like even just having the balance to even. Like in those moments, I'm up, you're up till 2 a.m. trying to figure out what to do with this, the audio on the, on the, on the film. And next thing you know, you, you waking up and you got to make sure everybody has breakfast. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. It's very, it's very crazy. So, I mean, I, I, I can, I could probably talk about that, that tight walk for forever, but I know that even for you too, Amir, during, during our, our hiatus, you had a lot of things going on as well. Oof. Uh, yeah, mine was, um, I mean, I always have like, you know, like, we had like you had a day job at that mm-hmm. time, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Josh had like you know it was he was like a director over at his job as far as in program director. I have been a freelance producer and creative consultant since early 2020. Mm-hmm. So it was like I was you know juggling it, and that's always clients and picking up new clients. And I have had I'm blessed. I got one long standing client that I've had since January 2020. And it's like they're just on a retainer model every month. I invoice them. They they pay me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really kind of like lot like how you call it like I don't know, like lockstep, I think it is, or just it's just very turnkey at this point. We like we have a system, it works. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point I could kind of count on that money. But then it just was family health challenges. Like my son had a big health crisis. Um, it began in like mid 2022 and it was kind of like, what's happening, you know, mm. from March, 2022. So it was like, okay, I'm there doing roots picnic and all these things. But then it's like, I had so much 
crazy, like just like this looming, like what is happening? You know what I mean? Yeah. At home. And then at the beginning of 2023, and then it was, you know, hospitalizations and things. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that was coming off of a big year, 2021, where the second half was crazy. He was in the hospital for like two months and, you know, just like he almost died a few times. And then 2022 was like, wait, something changed, was different. And then January, 2023, going through the year, he was in, like, in a health crisis again. And then October 2023, he almost died. It was it's, it's like his AVM just kept coming back and the bleed outs would be crazy. Like, like literally within five minutes, just mm. complete bleed out, fall, passing out. So it was just, it was terrible. So it was just, yeah, you know, sometimes, and that's the thing I always think mm. about sometimes when people are online giving a lot of advice about, oh, you still just got to do that. I'm like, yeah, if you're, if you're lucky enough, where everybody's healthy, yep. the circumstances line up. Um, but I, I always tell people, though, if you got healthy kids at home and you can make it happen, because sometimes you can't take it for granted. Because I, and that's, a, that's another thing we get into like procrastination. <laughs> I'm a big procrastinator and I had to learn over time and I still struggle with it, but I had to learn over time that. I'm like, so I'm gonna do that tomorrow. And it's like, yeah, what if tomorrow something happens and your son is the ABM rears his head again and you're mm -hmm. in the and y'all back at the hospital? Can you get it done then? You got the time now. Or it could just be anything, you know what I mean? Like it could be a blackout. Because mm -hmm. that's happened where it's like, you know, it's damn, I, I lost electricity. Like, you know, it's just ah, it's just like get it done, get it done now, execute. And I think, um, We've had a few conversations about it, and I think we've been like, "Let's go!" And we've, I've been seeing a difference. We just like yeah. send an email. Yeah. Here you go, like <laughs> just get I, it done. I, I will say that so. Uh, Mira has sent me a podcast. She listens to the Jay Shetty podcast, and it was Rob Dial. I think the guest was. Yeah. And that he he basically was talking about procrastination and how to basically defeat procrastination. What you can do to prepare yourself. How to how to really kind of just get the action items done. And ever since hearing that, I'll tell you that, I've told you that for weeks now. Like I heard that and I was like, everything we do is on go. Like, how can we make sure that we get the next thing done? I mean, we hear on the podcast recording, which is like, hey, we said weekly, yeah. we're going to make this happen. <laughs> we're going to be here. So, I mean, that that was that was huge. And then I know I, I'm, I'm going back a little bit, but having Amira join Mike J Media was like a blessing. I can't tell y'all. Like she had been honorary for so long, but we officially were like, "Hey, listen, here's the title. That we're putting it on you." And she's she's been kicking butt, honestly. Like the yeah, the screening, you. I wish there are some pictures on the screen. We got some, some pictures somewhere, yeah. but the screening was amazing, and you know she's been fantastic. And we've got some projects upcoming that we are excited to talk about when we can. But just know yeah. that you know we've really been working in the background. Um, yeah. So I guess Definitely. we I guess we could talk about like yeah so we're we're going into a weekly model because mm -hmm. before our thinking was more like you know we're inspiration pod and we're talking with people about their creative journeys and so we were thinking like sometimes as people we can underestimate what we have to offer right mm -hmm. in the sense of we were interviewing people we were we because we both you know when you're when you are creative and you're amongst community you end up meeting a lot of other creatives. And so we would have on friends, colleagues, people we know, um, and have them share their creative journey. But then it's, it got to the point where we're like, man, let's just, our phone conversations sometimes are just really powerful. And us talking about, like we said, going against procrastination, even just new tools we learned or mm -hmm. something we watched or listened to. It's like, we might as well share. And because a lot of it is us, you know, processing things live, but sometimes yeah. we find cheap codes in our own practice that could really help other people who maybe are thinking about it or maybe a little bit more junior in like their journey and how long they've been at it. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it is, it's just like, you know, we got to hear it, that whole, like everything, you know, imposter syndrome, all the yeah. stuff, which is like, I don't even know if we have an imposter syndrome. I don't think that it's, we just, we just procrastinated. Right? <laughs> it's a little bit of both. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. It's a little bit of both. We talk, like, to, to, to your point, like we talk about all the time, like we, I think we discount ourselves as creatives. Like we, we like gotten, getting done with a feature film. Like I, I produced a whole feature film. I'm it's hesitant for me to say that because you know, I, it's done and it's been, it's been published and it's been distributed. But to me in my brain, it's like, I got to focus on the next thing. 
I think similar to you, it's like, you, you know, we talk about your abilities and talents all the time and you help me get through certain things like you know, one being a wizard and just graphic design and media design itself. It's like, we got to really big ourselves up. I think even mm -hmm. doing this in this, the, the weekly format, like we're talking is a way to do that. Like we have things we want to share. We've been gone for a year. We probably picked up so many tools and tricks. I mean, even us recording now on Riverside, not sponsored, but shout out to them for the moment. Yeah. <laughs> even being on Riverside now is like, you know, we got a way to actually record in a high quality process and really be able to talk about this and, and expand our reach. Absolutely. So let's see. I'm thinking, um, so what, like, as we're talking about like tools, like what kind yeah. of tools, what, what, what have you been like working, like working with that you yeah. like, dang, this really changed the game for my practice. Man, I'm going to be honest with y'all, like uh, things that I've been kind of working with and, uh, one for me, it's been, uh, this is, this is the, the filmmaker side of me, but definitely Seed and Spark. Seed and Spark is a platform where you can raise, uh, funds for films. Not only do they really kind of help you with the fundraising portion, but they kind of really start taking care of you after as well. They kind of make sure they want to they help you with your, your making sure your production process is lined up. And they recently came out with a distribution uh, handbook, like playbook that has been like I've been combing through that thing like crazy. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about it, you know, in, our, in, our, in some segments that we have. But that that has been amazing. Um, Riverside for podcasting. You know, we now are producing three podcasts. Um, Tony Chanel uh, also started his podcast off the rip and then even doing Jasmine's podcast, um, got to make it, which will be out soon. It's, it's cool to like really say, I think it's been like, especially with the stuff that I'm using is how do I solve this problem? You know, we want to make sure that we can put out high quality content without having to go to rec Philly. Um, what do we do? Hey, we got Riverside. Boom. You know, it really helped us and, and it will help us kind of get those projects out. So those have been like my main tools. Um, I think I just now started really diving into Adobe uh, Premiere to edit now that I'm like recreating more content, which has been cool. But like a lot of it's been tools like that or even like the simple thing of being able to put my iPhone on my MacBook. <laughs> if y'all don't know about that, do that. Like you can put your iPhone on your MacBook, use it as your camera. That's how y'all are seeing me in all my glory right now. But it's 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 like, you know, being able to kind of just solve problems with the tech that, you, that we're using. Um, but what you've yeah. been using, Amir? What you got? What you got going on over Man, there? And I've been using the same old, same old stuff, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm yeah, I'm a graphic designer at my core. I'm an artist at my core, and I, I still use Adobe for a lot of things, Photoshop. Um, but I've real heavily been doing stuff because I feel like it's it's much more rapid in the way I can prototype stuff and do drafts. Mm. Is um Canva, so. Mm. I use Canva for a lot of things and sometimes I'm designing elements in Photoshop and mm -hmm. then bringing it into Canva just because of the way I can like drag them and reposition and do things fast and maybe get a different element from an already preset one. And I'm, I'm not going to lie, we talked about this too with Adobe products, how they put out the, um, and I'm, I'm like, I guess it was, I saw, a, a, I feel kind of, all right, this feels kind of crazy because I'm like, I saw on social media and sometimes we talk, we tell people like, who says you could believe everything on social media? Yeah. You know what I mean? But I did think I did see a, um, Adobe sent like a notice or whatever mm -hmm. on my account, like saying like, like a message about, they made it sound really user friendly, mm -hmm. but with the light, it's basically like if you're using our product suite, um, the subscription model basically like you're in a sense not licensing like you know we are licensing the software it's just a subscription yeah. but that they, they can use our stuff yeah and that kind of doesn't sit well i mean listen i'm working <laughs> on for a client so i i, I got a, a new client um mm. a r b group and i'm they're about to drop their ep in a few days and so i'm doing pr work for them because it's just so it's one of those things where people say, what do you do, Amir? And I'm like, ah, but I'm like, I am like a creative and media consultant, but that is, I could kind of do everything. You know what I mean? If you, mm -hmm. I could redesign your website, I could do, you know, but when I tell you I was about to, they sent me a, a WAV file and I was yeah. going to get the snippets up somewhere. And I was like, oh, I could easily convert this to an MP3 because the, their site needs an MP3. And the way I stopped like if I upload this to anything Adobe, are they going to then feel like they, you know, like yeah. own their song, their song snippet? Like yeah. that's a little, a little crazy to me. It's odd because like I feel like the, I feel like a lot of 
creative organizations are trying to find how AI fits in. You know, Apple's trying yeah. to put it in their phones. You got ChatGPT on everything. You got Canva in putting AI into theirs to give you like, you know, prompts to create images. And I feel like the, the AI is right now, like, you know, when the internet first came out, people were like, it's a wild, wild west. You don't know how to, yeah. how it's going to be successful. I think specifically for this Adobe situation, it's like, Hey, you, you recognize that your AI needs content to, you know, create a better content. Why yeah. not just feed it yourself rather than having your users feed it and possibly licensing their material? I think that's the problem with it for me is that there's other ways to go about it. Like you don't have to go about it this way. It brings up the conversation of like, what does that now become for creatives? Like, how do we, what do we do now? Like, are we going to like trust this software or we, do we need our softwares to be like a closed system that we know that you know nobody else can kind of take our stuff like it really brings up a bigger conversation it really does because it's like you know back in the day you get your disc or you know you download the software and so it makes me think like damn do i download the software um like can is that still possible to just do it without it being in the cloud like the creative cloud mm -hmm. download it you know take my my computer offline make my projects it just it, but it's like oh, it's just it's tricky man it's, it's so tricky because that's that's a little scary like i remember mm -hmm. um on social media when it was that wave of everybody like doing the ai photos and to show mm -hmm. you as a knight or as a princess or i refused because i was like no they they trying to you know you're like you said you're feeding it images yeah. and it's like so are they going to make ai like so eventually your face springs up and it's like yeah some we all kind of have a doppelganger somewhere in the world <laughs> i i go and i oh was it 1999 mm. i went to toronto first semester college mm. and i was there with a group of a whole artist friends and stuff and we were all there and then they say amira i was like what they're like that girl looks just like you and i said there ain't no way Yo, bro, this girl looked just like me. We was at That's this crazy. park. It was like a festival. She yeah. looked just like me with a different hairstyle. Mm. And it was like, ooh, like, you know, so it was like, okay, you know, we, we're not as, we're unique, but we're not yeah. quite, like someone looks like us, you know, even our own family, they look like us. Mm -hmm. But it's a little scary that, that they could hijack our projects in that yeah. way. Like you can, you, you next thing you know, you see yourself on like New York City billboard, like just your face, like promoting something you don't know nothing about. You know, and that's that's something that's kind of like with um what SAG after was fighting against, right? With mm -hmm. all the contracts mm -hmm. where they were trying to um go against the studios because the studios were trying to make it where even background extras got a complete body scan. Yeah, and they paid them for that day, mm -hmm. and then they would you know use AI versions of them. Mm -hmm. as background and it's like no man like that's not no if you need extras for a scene i know it's spooky that it? that that just got me to thinking too like we there was a whole time period where they were even working on ai writing scripts like they were getting rid of writers because ai is out here writing a script and i'm going oh we can shoot this like it's really wild how ai is like changing the game it, it, and it's crazy because okay i used ai the other day in i guess it was inside canva Canva mm. has it. It's like they call it now Magic Studio. They, they, some of the tools they call it Magic Studio. Yeah. yeah. But for my client, the same, they have these this photo, and it almost shows their whole body. It's almost like down to like maybe the calf. So yeah. part of it is unfinished, and then the top, like she has like this bun braids, and it like chopped just a little top. Mm. And so I said Magic, like they got a Magic Expand. Yeah. And the first time I tried it, it was like a cutout version of them like a um with no background and it mm -hmm. was like it did it but it was like uh eh. then i said oh wait let me back up back up you know give start with the original picture and did it and it's flawless really it ended like it, it did, like like brought the dresses gave her long, long dresses and it ended it like i would never not know she her hair was like wow. in these bun like a uh, braids and like double strand twists and they mm -hmm. they the texture was perfect when they like how they finished the Dang. bun everything i was like damn you know it was it was pretty That's good yeah. but other times ai can hallucinate especially yeah. with numbers <laughs> yeah especially with numbers like it'll, the data that it'll give you for numbers is crazy um so it's like you do have to fact check it but it's just i don't know it ai i, I see the potential for stuff like that of finishing a photo like great you know if it works and then you could keep you know feeding it prompts so we could tighten it up mm. make it more like this make it more like that but because I've, I've done it, I've used it for some writing things and then just yeah. edit it, you know, because procrastination will make me not start. But if I tell <laughs> ChatGPT, 
hey, using this info, look them up, tell me this, da 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 da, give me that, it'll do it. And I just, I can edit from there and it helps yeah. me push past procrastination and start, right? I'm with you. I'm 100% yeah. with you. I do that same thing. I use ChatGPT to give me a give me a prompt or give me a give me a template to do an ask email. That's how I came up with our ask emails. I was like, give me a I template for an ask email, and then I'm I gonna refine it. <laughs> I read it. I said, yeah. who voices this? This this this. G I said this ChatGPT because this don't sound like Josh. <laughs> It was, all good. It, was a it was a couple pieces in there that was like, oh yeah, Josh wrote this. The rest of it was like, this chat GPT really working. They be a little formal, a little too much. Super, be super it's formal, too many especially words with people sometimes. you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah. I guess, but it's just, there. it, it cannot replace a human. It, all not. it is is predicting like patterns, yeah. which is a thing. Like, you know, being able, it's, well, one is, is sourcing the internet to gather mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. and trying to find a pattern of what's most common, you know, but it, it just can't replicate human mm -hmm. thought in the way like a flow it could be or how we could sound regionally. You know, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'm gonna do a prompt and tell it to write something in the style of what this person would say wow. using black Philadelphia dialect. And see what it come up with. It's about to get real racist. <laughs> it might be like, yo, it, he told the young boy stop drawing real quick. <laughs> I, just to see what, what it do. Like, are yeah. you that smart? Yeah. But also, it's like, where are you sourcing it from? Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't That's know. a really good question. That's a really good question. Yeah. I'm, I'm super interested to see it, just how it's all going to unfold because it ain't no running from it at this point. It's everywhere. So how are yeah. we going to accept it and move with it and move on? Because... Even like Riverside got the AI. They break up your scenes, cut your show, cut your, your shows up. It gets it gets crazy. I think it's it's good. It's great for that, especially for editing, finding the mm -hmm. hot spots. But oh you know what? That just God. made me think of. Yeah. What if? So I don't know if you saw Divorce in a Black. What if Tyler Perry used chat, like use AI to write their script? <laughs> Cause some of that dialogue was real <laughs> stiff. Uh, it was real like this doesn't feel natural. That's uh, that was the response, and I'm like, we think he write it. What if he just use an AI and then doing some touches? He was like, yeah, I'm, I gave y'all the AI version of Divorce in the Black. I'm gonna just let me see what y'all think. <laughs> see if yeah, it goes over I mean, well. Maybe you know it could be a little AI, and then he just goes in and does some smudging. Cause I'm telling you, I'm yeah. only. I think I'm two thirds through the movie and yeah. there's some parts where it is so where I'm like, what is this dialogue? Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. is she's being loose to guys while he's being <laughs> overly formal and yeah. kind of like, do people talk like that? Like, don't these, don't these people know each other? Did you see, cause this is reminding me literally of, did you see the, uh, the final season of Atlanta when they did the Tyler Perry episode? No. So uh, Donald Glover does this spoof of Tyler Perry, and it's basically it takes place at like Tyler Perry Studios, and um, it it basically is like he works it like a, like a kind of like like a, as if AI was shooting. It's a production that sets are like shift in, shift out, like set in, set out, like actor in, actor out. The main the, the main uh, I can't remember the main girl character, but she stumbles in on Tyler Perry, and he's like, I I basically like I ran this, I worked this, like. It works. It works. So like, it's like again, like if he did AI it up and did the production in there, he's trying to see how how quick he can get this, you know, in and out. So and that's know, that's crazy. And it's crazy. It's been a formula for years, but I'm like, mm -hmm. man, the it's so many people who they will defend Tyler Perry, and and it's like, man, he he doing his thing. He, he rich. Is. It's he's not above critique. None of us are, mm -mm, right? Mm -mm. No, but they will no be means. like, well, he rich and you not, and I'm like. Okay, and so many Ku Klux Klan members were rich too. I mean, not to not to go drastic, but yeah. it's like <laughs> just because someone is rich, yeah, it doesn't. What is that? What what's the equation? You know, some yeah. people invest well. Like his soundstage, yeah. I hear is amazing, but yeah. it's like, man, some some good writers. You know, it's like some good writers could turn out some really great stuff, mm -hmm. and people be like, well, it works for him, and I'm like, I hear you, but. We could still talk about it. Exactly. We could still say, like, ah, that was tricky, you know? Yeah. yeah. Especially, and, and he has always great cast. He has great actors in it, you know? His cast is always A1. A1. You know? Great, great talent. So it's like, man, get them something they could sink their teeth in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I but think, I'm, I, I'm really great. I'm really glad to hear he paid people their worth, though. That, I was saying, that was going to be that was gonna be my big thing, is that I heard he pays what they should be paid. Like I yeah. think Taraji, did Taraji say that was the most she ever been paid? 
I think so. And yeah. then Megan Good said that was the most she's ever been. Yeah. Made. And it's like you, you know? have our legends. Like they I consider them legends, actresses to be legends, and they deserve, you know, every penny of that. So Absolutely. if Tyler Perry's paying, I'm I'm going to Tyler Perry, to be honest with you. You can't you believe it. <laughs> I'm be like, you know, I'm always I'm a control freak. I'm like, oh, maybe I could say he'd be like, shut up. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna just read the script, my bad. I'm gonna just I'm read gonna, the script. Bro, you, hey, listen, I'm gonna just say it. But he's gonna so be like, who? If I like, I put the emphasis on. He'd be like, "I ain't tell you to do that." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say, speaking of scripts, and I, I'm gonna I'm ask our audience to keep keep us in your prayers. I have submitted a project to Jordan right. Peele's contest, um, and we find out in September uh, who gets selected, who doesn't get selected, and we are going to pray that my script gets selected. Um, it's been radio silence for a while now. You know, everybody's yeah. been kind of waiting. It still says it's in consideration in Film Freeway. But I have a short yeah. film, put the script in, and we're going to see if um, it, it pans out. Yeah, because they, I mean, they, they let us know, you know, September. Mm -hmm. That would be dope, man. That would be dope. Like, in Josh's, Josh's short, it's really good, you <laughs> yeah. know? It's a good, how, how many minutes is it? Is it like a 20-minute a joint? It's 15 pages. You could probably stretch it to like 30, 45 minutes. It's not, it's not crazy yeah. long. For some suspense things, yeah, but fifteen nice pages. I mean, thing. usually a page a minute, so it'd be like fifteen a fifteen minute. We yeah. might maybe add in some stuff, but it's really good. I see so much. Um, I mean, I could, I could just I could, like the style, the deck we put together, mm -hmm. and like the visual style of it. It's going to look like really cool. Is boy, it's going to be I mean, especially the special effects part. Like, yeah. man, it's, it could be really, really good. I'm really good. At, listen, yeah, I'm going to find a way to make it happen. If that ain't it, I'm going to find another way to make it happen. But I, that's I've been doing that in the background too, y'all. So I've been writing, I've been producing, kind of picking up smaller things, but really just trying to level up in the, in the next ability. But yeah. I've also been trying to, you know, increase the things that I've watched to learn more about, you know, how I can better make our content. And, um, you know, talking about Divorce in the Black, I haven't seen it fully. My wife has watched it. She says it is nuts and I, it's on my to watch list. But I have been watching Supercell. I'm two episodes in on Netflix. And if y'all don't know, Supercells is uh, the British, I can say, I guess it's like the British show on Netflix, but it's about the black people with some superpowers and it gets kind of crazy. Um, yeah. But if you have not seen it, check it out. Amir yeah, has I started saw. watching it too. I started watching <laughs> <laughs> I only laughing because Josh, Josh only laughed because I, we started recording a little late because I was I was like I, I'm like oh I'm here I come bro I was watching it on my couch and I fell asleep only because I was tired <laughs> I sleep eight hours every night like that's like what I seven hours okay I could anything less than that I'd be tired my cousin was in town mm -hmm. getting to get her hair done by Philly because she's from New York get her hair done by Philly stylist and you know they turned let's go to dinner girl mm -hmm. then it turned into oh we outside and then turned into I'm not in bed so third and I'm <laughs> up and then it's just like always doing the most but um that you know and it's funny I was right when I was getting ready it made mm. me think the main character I mean there, there's multiples but I feel like the the show really centers on the one character Mike yeah yeah I'm like am I tripping he reminds me of Jamie Hector he so I I, I gotta I, I should have delivered my research before I just jumped into this but one of the things I want to say this this mo this show actually was uh, which call it publicized and like advertised a few years ago, like somebody mm -hmm. and I want to say something maybe went viral on Twitter or had gone viral on social media, and this is I think the final outcome of it like actually being produced. Um, but he does look a little like Jamie Hector. I had to pull a picture. But now, and now I looked it up. I'm like, like not quite. Really, he kind of looks it's like the, it's um, this part. <laughs> You know what? You know who he, who he really kind of reminds me of is um, Yandy Smith's husband, Mendeecees. Um, they like they could be related, but yeah, like they man, he's a so far so good with the um, yeah. series. I've been hearing a lot of great things. That people are like, oh my god, Supercell is so good. Mm -hmm. Um, I was fading though, man. I was fading bad. Toast and Cole. Yeah, that's the guy's name. But he yeah, Toast and Cole's been in a lot of stuff though. He was in House Party. He was uh the uh. Oh my goodness, that boy's name. He's a singer. What is that boy's name? He's in The Shy. He's a singer and he was the lead in House Party. I gotta now I gotta pull it up. Yeah, I can't. Jacob Lattimore. This. Okay. Yeah. So Tosin Cole was opposite of Jacob Lattimore. And I think he did a super good job in House Party. He was kind of, he he was basically like um 
Dede, in a sense. He, I think he was really good. I think he was really good. You know, the good. acting on there is solid. And it's, mm-hmm. um, I mean, early in, it's, it's one of those things I heard about for years. And I remember yeah. Idris Elba was doing a campaign against, um, I think they, I think it's either don't, I guess they call it a stabbing. Mm. But I, I feel like they, they call it something else over in the UK, too. Like, it's yeah. a slang for getting stabbed. Yeah, because they don't have but guns it, over there. No, they don't. So it was something like, don't stab your future or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, it's crazy. But it's like, <laughs> yeah, they be... I, it just, I'm a little scared of knives. Mm, so I to see too. them in that show pull out those big knives out their waistband, it's like, you're not scared you're going to cut yourself? But then yeah, I like, guess if you, you shoot yourself... Uh, shooting yourself is probably way better, worse than cutting yourself. But, yeah. And it, but I, I mean... Feel- you know, I'm a, I'm over here in Philly, so it's like mm. them kids be pulling them sticks out. Like sometimes you see young kids and they yeah. pulling them down, and you be like, whoa, like so. But it just was kind of like, wow. Like, I feel like there's a safety wise. on a stick. There's no safety on a knife. Like you you bend the wrong yeah. way, that joint gonna cut you. Yeah, but they them kids don't be having safeties though. You know what I mean? Nah. Yeah. Even Glocks, Glocks are so hair trigger that it's mm. so easy to just pull it at the wrong time, mm. and you don't. It's just crazy. Mm. But that, like some of those things, I, I wonder, I'm going to have to look on some chat. I'm like, what the, what the UK got to say about this chat? <laughs> they be like, you Go know, the brothers be like, finally, we see ourselves. Like, it's really how we are, isn't it? Or something. <laughs> like, that's really us. Like, do they feel like this is a real representation? Or are they them, just like, yeah, yeah but kind of, you know. I feel like at the end of Supercell, this is like, um, I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up the accent a little bit. So, talking gonna about try. end of roads. <laughs> You're going to try. <laughs> Um, Ayana's place in our culture. I'm trying to think. So Adobe owning, are we, I gotta, I gotta double check that. Yeah. So then, okay. I haven't, you know, and that's the thing too. I feel like we've been the work side of the creativity. We mm-hmm. haven't been watching as much. Yeah. Um, cause I'm thinking besides Supercell, what have I been looking at? I've been watching a lot of anime. I ain't gonna lie. That's like always my go-to. I'm at the gym or something. I just, I watch some anime. Yeah, I think, and it's it's like everything, but you know, since the writer's strike, I feel like everything is like in between seasons. Mm, yeah. So stuff yeah. that would have came already, like the stuff I usually watch, P Valley, mm-hmm. um, Bel Air, so bad. Bel Air season three comes out when? I think September, okay. August. I think it's September. Or am I wrong? I don't. know. I gotta Google again. I know yeah. Bel Air comes back like August thirteenth or seventeenth, somewhere around there. Yeah. But yeah, when does P Valley come back? Um, I've been waiting for that so long. Yeah, it feels like forever, but it's supposed to be August fifteenth. It says for Bel Air season three. Re- oh, Bel Air, yeah, okay. yeah, August fifteenth. If that was P Valley, I'd have been like, all right, bet. <laughs> yeah, it's P Valley coming back on a twenty twenty four. I have to watch, and I I have to do this because I I told Amira I would, and I have not done it. So I need everybody who's listening to hold me accountable. I have oh. to watch Power or Raising Canaan. I have to yes. watch Raising Canaan. If I yes. don't ride raising case, so I, I I have to explain to everybody my my beef with power, in the power world. It's no beef against Fifty Cent. I ain't got no beef against him. But when I watched season one of Power, I was like, this is a great show. I it was yes. kind of unpredictable. I didn't know what was going on. Season two felt the same way. Right as the seasons progressed, I was like, all right, this is starting to get a little predictable, y'all. The final season, they're trying to figure out you know who killed Ghost, and for people who haven't seen it. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to tell y'all who who killed Ghost. But when I tell you after the first episode, I knew who killed Ghost and just ran with it. And I was like, if it was this person, there's no need for me to watch the season. It just put a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. That was really all it was. It was just a little bit of a bad taste. And I've kind of haven't dove into the rest of like the power, I guess you could say universe since then. Um, but I, I told Amira and I told Tony I would give it a shot. And then we're going to talk about it on the show. So I need to make sure that I watch it. Yeah, Power. How many seasons did they do? Didn't they do five of the original first season? Um, right now. Power, American drama. There are six seasons of Power. Okay. So they, they gave a strong four seasons, maybe three, oh, and, yeah. a three I, and a half. I'll give them four. I'll give them four. Because that's when uh, Ghost was in jail. And I, I'll give them four. I was kind of still with them. And Angela was still alive, there... so I was I was with them. Oh, I see. You know, then it got yeah, it did it get it got real janky, and it just it just they they made Ghost and Tommy be different than the characters like the character arc that they built. Mm-hmm. They turned them from these smooth criminals, you know, into these bumbling idiots a couple times. Mm-hmm. Where I was like, 
Tommy was a, he he was scaling the side of houses like a cat burglar and entering to go in and get evidence to do whatever you know what I mean to go hit you know go go kill people. A mm -hmm. uh, ghost has his name from being a ghost. Like they now he's not really a ghost great, anymore. Yeah, now he's like a bumbling idiot. They can't figure out certain things. I'm like, you don't go from being number two person under the distributor to now what he has going on. Now, mind mm -hmm. you, I guess that's the game, right? The game does happen where sometimes you're up, sometimes you become less high or, you know, new players come in town, um, power rankings, uh, distributors and who has what, that changes. Okay, that's like life and whatever. Mm -hmm. But it just was like, they made, the, it's like they were changing their personalities, but so drastic to mm -hmm. like, and I don't like when writers do that. I don't like mm -hmm. when writers, instead of some writing is hard. We know that. Look, we, yeah. which is short. We know that writing, is writing, hard. <laughs> writing your character into a situation and then writing them out of it. Sometimes finding the solve, you, you know, get into the psychology of why or what's next. That's, that's, just hard. You know, it's, it's really hard sometimes. And they had some things where it was just like, so y'all made Ghost and Tommy real goofy now so that you could make, bring the story here because who they are that you built them or you wrote them to be, this wouldn't even be possible. This this scene would have never happened. I remember I, I hated the way they did um, Milan. Remember? Mm, um, yeah. The character yeah. was Dean. He came in yes. as Dean, a security guy, and then yes. he exposed himself to be Milan the Serb. Mm. And then the man who was like a cannibal, you know, mm. and he was just the so hard to defeat. And that was fly when they brought him in. It was like, whoa, how are they going to get out of this? And then they, they got him out because they had a party at Truth Nightclub and their folks were there and they all had these little baby guns and were like, we got you now. And I was just like, oh, so now he's out because you yeah, held the like gun to him. And it, it's like, it just was such an easy out for yeah. for some people who were so ruthless and so powerful that I was just like, that was lazy writing. I get they they wrote theirself into a corner and yeah. didn't know how to get out of it. And I was yeah. just like, man, come on. The stakes always felt so high, but then the execution to get out of the situations felt like you could come on, like make make yeah. them meet the stakes. You know what I'm saying? And that was when we got to like approaching season four and after, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they used to be beautiful. Yeah, they used to have. Oh, they had some great villains. Like it Lobos was, like, was so good and Lobos, Lobos was fun. Oh my goodness! And then to get out of that situation, it took so much. You know what I'm saying? And it so made you much. Feel like it made you feel like you really were like. The stakes were high. The results were high. At the end of it, you were like, "Oh my god!" Like they did it. Like they finally did. Yeah. Cause he was just boy. He was he was funny and terrifying. Oh, like Fantasma. He was great. I got something for you. He was. Great. It is like he wanted to sleep with ghosts. Uh -huh, he wanted to kill uh -huh, them. He's uh -huh. boy. It was he was good. But it's just and he had great villains. And then it just got cheapened and they just changed. Out of it. it got tricky. But you know, a lot of shows do that. They yeah. get to. A certain season and it's just like because it is it's like where do we go now yeah, how do we solve next? and then how do we solve the original problem we introduced in season one yeah. you know yeah. or have we looped that mm -hmm. that's why i do think it's good when um if writers think of it, think of a 3x 4x 5x or whatever if they just see a landing if they have their x and they figure out you know where can i land this over the seasons yeah and you know how you want to end it or land yep. it because then it, after that sometimes it's still good but it rushes yeah. um you know what i this guys, we have not met in a long time. I was like, I, as we're talking, I'm like, a rap shit was on and came on and went while we were going. Like that was that another show. one. I was like, that was in, a great show. That was that was amazing. I like in the fact that it got canceled is like heartbreaking. So yeah, that like, was, there's that. Yeah, that was that was a really really great show. Um, and it had so much potential. And in the two seasons, I could have seen them land that in four seasons. Oh, absolutely. And they like they had a, a clear arc at the get mm -hmm. there, and it's mm -hmm. just like they end the season two so good mm -hmm. that it's just like damn, like ah, uh, mm -hmm. we can't we can't get that back at all. Yeah, and um, I, that's to, to your point of like the 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 arc, like it was it was perfectly painted, and then yes, that happened. So and each and each they never they didn't have any because some shows do that they have an episode where you're kind of like mm, nothing really happened this episode or yeah. you know they everything kept the pace was really good. Yeah. Um, one show that I saw that was brilliant was um on Showtime. It was Your Honor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your you Honor watched was, Your Honor. You caught I watched the whole. I I didn't get yeah. season two. I finished the whole first season, and that was like nuts. 
And you know, season two is great too. And you know, it, it wasn't supposed to be a season two. No, yeah, it, it wrapped up in season one. So I was like, yeah, I was no, pretty impressed. Yeah, they they they've made it a one season show. Yeah. But then the demand was so high that they did two seasons. Yeah, that show. And it's crazy. not coming back. Season two is just as good. Wow. Season two was really good too. Wow. But that was such a oh my god, that show was so good. Mm. Um. Man, have you so seen any of the shows on Apple? So I, I, this is out of left field, but have you seen any of the shows on Apple TV? Like, like, like hijacked, not, presumed innocent, dark matter. No, I, I, I gotta you, catch up on a lot of stuff because I've been hearing man. about a lot of. I, I've heard about. Is it called them? Yeah. Them. I've been hearing about a whole lot of great content all yeah. over, and I just have been. Yeah. You know? Them. We, I binged the latest season of them with my um my in laws, and that was like. That's what's it? oh uh not James Wolf what is that boy's name he's also in the shy <laughs> uh, Wolf James maybe Wolf James yeah yeah Wolf, Wolf Luke James Luke James Luke James, James. who's sure Wolf me. James that I feel like that's like his, I feel like this is like one of his yeah this is this is also his, his alias James but Luke, Luke, James, Luke James Luke James in the latest season of them does an outstanding job I don't think anybody's talking about it enough he does no, an I, outstanding I've, job. I've seen a few, but I don't think it's being as watched as it could be, should be. Yeah. But I've seen it's a few memes sure. where people were talking about like how amazing his performance is and oh my gosh. like he is awesome in it. And I oh believe it, you know. Yeah. I totally believe it. He um there's so much stuff I gotta watch. Then there's I think it was a detective show, another it's just oh, I'm excited for mm. With Idris, uh, not Idris. No, Aldis uh, Hodge. Aldis Hodge. Yeah, that fine man. Boy, <laughs> boy, that's a man right there. <laughs> <laughs> he is so fine. Um, but the James Patterson books, man, is just, he's perfect for it. Mm -hmm, he's so, mm -hmm. he's perfect, perfect actor. Like, mm -hmm. man, um, I'm really excited for that to come out, but that's, that's going to be some time. But I'll say definitely anybody who's listening, because I know you can leave comments and now stuff on your, on the Spotify, on our, on our episode. So if you, want to like or like shows that we should watch just leave a comment let us know because yeah. the, now that we're building up this <laughs> reserve of shows we need to watch add some we will talk about them we just want to know what we need to watch we already have our list but we would love to know what else y'all got in mind because the, like and there's now, some great shows coming up and my t-shirt i got my jalen hurts t-shirt that i bought i bought it at yeah. the, um, eagles game on christmas mm -hmm. that just passed i um went to that game so you know preseason start and mm -hmm. I, you know, you know what I mean, Josh. We might all have to do some some family trips to the game. You know oh, listen, I mean? I'm with it. I'm with it. Listen, we are Eagles household. Shadir don't know nothing about no sports, but that's okay because I do. Yeah. And Jalen Hurts is the frat brother, so you know I, I got to make sure I say what's oh, up to my brother. bro. Uh, Hell yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. If I, if, I'm just waiting for the moment where I can just be like, I, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> we need a moment. We need a moment one time. Yeah, man. No, that would be good. We um. So I'm like, I mean, I'm excited about the season. Yeah. Just because, man, like. When we have a good, like the Eagles games, like we just have Philly just turns into like this really, it, it, the community comes out, you know, yeah. um, the tailgating over at the stadium, mm -hmm. even just all the sports bars. It's just, it's a good time in Philly, man, mm -hmm. when the Eagles are playing, when the Sixers are having a good season. I was going to say, yeah, so, Philly sports right now? Yeah. Y'all yeah, got it. So. Paul George and then the, the Phillies always make the playoffs somehow. So like I just yeah. feel like y'all are a, a, a postseason town for real. Like y'all really are. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm looking really forward are. to all of that. Um, but just all like the creative pursuit stuff, man. Yeah. Like looking forward to um, good good new music. My um mm -hmm. friends, the R&B group Aries, they're coming out with a new EP, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they it's been long awaited. They they've been on the scene for a very long time in music, mm -hmm. and they took a step away from the industry for some time and. There, it's just like them being my friends, right? Yeah. So it's like they can sing. You know, some people are like, oh, they can sing. No, they can sing. Like yeah. their speaking voice is just like beautiful. You can hear it. Yeah. Like some people, I can hear them talking. I'd be like, can you sing? But you can hear, like, okay. I remember I was at um, a Yankee's house and she was talking about a song. She was thinking about like, oh, it's lullaby or like a song she was singing her daughter. Mm. And they, they kind of like mentioned it. And her husband was like, sing the song. Yeah, sing mm. it a little bit. And she starts singing it. And I was just like, how does that tone just fly mm. out of you? Just pure tone. Like they're just, so they, they have a beautiful offering coming. And that's, I'm looking forward to that. Um, man, you know, it's just, but like back to what we were talking about earlier about like procrastination and stuff. It's yeah. like, I, I just think in my head now, because Spike Lee has such a, a huge body of work. I just yeah. be like, what would Spike do? 
because sometimes, you know, even with like the self-funding stuff, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? We, and that's really his whole career, you know, finding deals and picking up the phone. And when it's like a budget shortfall of like who can help fund the project. So yeah, if I, I think I usually have a hunch and I always try to think, <laughs> not even think positive, but some things I just feel it. Like, yeah. like I feel it. I really feel you are going to win. You're going to be one of the winners of the Jordan Pill, like the short competition. Mm -hmm. But if not, we still doing it. We're going to make oh, it absolutely. happen. Absolutely. We, absolutely. but it's like we go and we're going to do it quick, like in the sense of we're going to find the money, right? Yeah. But yeah, but other than that, we have been working too. Because I remember we, um, this past March, me and Josh did a film workshop oh, at Rec Oh man, yes, we did. Yeah, independent wow. film workshop. Yeah. Dang. We we have been working. Talk about it, girl. Talk about yeah. it. Yeah. So that was um you know, getting your project done, what we call it, affordably and, and efficiently. Yeah. Yeah. Of like the independent film. Efficiently. And we went literally through our whole process from pre-production all the way to post and marketing and, wow. you know, and getting it to distribution and getting distributors. And um, we used the film old head as a model of mm -hmm. how we did it, but then it like jogs your memory. And then like, we were giving the people a lot of like, um, it was an in-person um, workshop. And we have the slides from the workshop up on um what's the platform josh i want to say we, we oh uh gumroad we yep, have no we have we have the uh the pitch deck so we actually gave the pitch deck out to anybody who was in attendance um and we said you know donate whatever you think it's worth so it's on gumroad uh, i believe the link is on our instagram uh yeah. the mike j media instagram we'll, we'll put it in the disruptors one as well so you guys can see it um but yes yeah, it's, it's there and we we really are trying to just like being disruptors in the culture, you know, we're going through our journey. We want to share our creative uh, endeavors and the things that we're working on and give people a peek inside. So that pitch deck will be available for people to see, donate what you think it's worth and, and check it out. But that was, that was really a, <laughs> that was a good session too. Like yeah. people really came there and asked mad questions and wanted to know like our, our thorough process. And we really gave it to them. Absolutely. Like the things that, you know, it, it's just like little things that sometimes like there's always the big things like casting and all those things and, you know, crewing up when you're about to do a pro project. But then it's like the, the stuff that sometimes, you know, people don't consider with independent film because it's just, you know, whether you're a digital mm -hmm. imaging technician and where you really need someone just to take care of the the data. Yeah. Just the drives is keeping that stuff organized is, you know, it's hard film film this film thing is hard it's so collaborative yeah. but it's also you you need someone who is going to be you know tedious and painstaking and take care of those things so it's like um yeah that I, that was that was pretty cool we did a lot of preparation we had a really cool presentation of like going through it but it it is it's like boy i just think about i think about spike a lot recently yeah. of just and even just like the the agency side of the services we could offer to keep the lights on and the stuff paid in the between doing the projects, but yeah. just chasing money, yeah. asking for money all the time yeah. to get the project done. And then the plan for the project itself to, you know, break even, make money, you know, it's, um, boy, I, it's crazy. Cause it's like, I used to work in a lot of different industries mm -hmm. in between. Like I was like, I was young as a performing artist and then I did some, a little acting, then I was working in banking, then I was working in uh, software, you know, and software was great. It was good money. But I remember the whole time I used to be like, man, what I want to get to what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. And what I really want to do is just like, you know, this creative stuff is like, it's, it's, it's like a lot. And sometimes you do feel like, what am I doing? You know what yeah. I mean? And it really is it's like the ad sales it's like selling ads and um scaling scaling for you know offering your services and ad you know doing ads for other people like you know us creatively creating their ads in their spots and their creative that'll you know that keeps the lights on and then you know yeah. selling ads against our projects it's like but sometimes you're just like boy this film stuff Man, Easter I, famine all the time. Yeah, I think <laughs> even to that, like to that, I think the again back to you, the podcast you had sent me, the Jay Shetty joint. It's yes. like whatever you want to really be your thing, just make it Plan A and push for it. Like it's the last, like like the example that he gave was like if I if I told you to make if you if I needed you to make a million dollars by the end of the year, could you do it? 
Yeah. And everybody was like, ah, uh, maybe, no, nah, not really. Yeah. Maybe 5% yeah, chance of doing that. Yeah, you said, what's the that. chances of it? And they were saying yeah. 0%. 0%, 5%, 10%. 10%. Yeah. yeah, 5% maybe. Yeah. And then he said, if I needed you to make a million dollars by the end of the, day, end of the year, unless all your family would die. And people are like, 100%, 100%, I make the million dollars. It's like, why? Yeah, what, they, what's stopping you from pushing you to do that? Exactly. And it's your why, right? It's exactly. the why, why you need to do it. And it's so true because it's times where I'm like, I need to get into or do this. There's times where I had an iteration of that where I'm like, I have to afford this yep. for my son, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to make this amount of money. Um, at one point, he was he was young. He was probably like 10. And actually, was, we was like around seven. He was supposed to go into a surgery and I had to make a windfall. I was like, I got to make this amount of money for this surgery because this is how much it's not going to be covered by my work insurance when I was at the software company. And it's like, I figured it out because it was a necessity because it's like, this has to happen. Yeah. So it's like about your why. And, you know, it's, it's a whole psychological money is a, such a psychological thing, you know, like yeah. it's such a, yeah. Cause if, if just your why turning on or off can dictate how much you're going to go to reach your goal yeah. then it's, it's all it's purely psychological you know yeah because it's not it's not a thing of um ability right mm -hmm. it's not ability your ability is there and then it's like the thing where um one of my great creative friends um julius he shout out to um epic tech group they i remember one time he recommended um back when i was still working with the film commission or working for the film commission can i say and I was, I, I did somebody's intro. Like I introduced some people together to make some, you know, just to, they could collaborate or something. And then he was just like, boy, you do that so much. And he was like, you know, I, he saw that with women a lot. He said, mm -hmm. women, you guys will put two people in a room together or you will extend the introduction. And then they make a lot of money with, from that introduction. Yeah. And sometimes y'all don't get anything. He said, men, we don't always operate like that. He was like, mm -hmm. we do an introduction and we insert ourselves or we do contracts to make sure that we get money in the middle. Yep. And I was like, dang. And you know, it was just like, wow. So that made me really change my practice. It's just like that perspective. Cause I was looking at it like me being the head of marketing at the film commission was kind of like social work in a sense. And it's mm. like, oh, we're a free producer for visiting or for production and people in the area. But it's like, yeah, to an extent. But then when it's me giving personal, yeah, it's like, nah, I need to make some money if y'all yeah. going to be making money, right? Yeah. And then it's even um, Julius. So I brought Julius up because he recommended this book to me called Who Not How. Mm. And how a lot of times us as creatives, when we want to do a creative project or we're taking something on, we look at it as in, okay, how can I make this happen? Yeah. And the how is now we're looking at my home life, my family life, these three projects I'm working on. If we have a day job, where can I squeeze that in? Where do I find the time? How much am I going to have to do? And it's like, no, at that point, it's who. Yep. Think about who you can hire to outsource it. You know what I mean? And it, he was saying, like, he was like, you need to really read that book because it is. I can do a lot, like, from design and marketing and copywriting. And um, I can do a lot. But just because I can doesn't mean I should. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, that's not, not procrastinating and knowing <laughs> I am not an island. Exactly. <laughs> I don't I have know, to do it all myself. I, that's that's a big lesson. I think we're I'm I'm still actively learning that, that with you. Like that is it's it's rough sometimes. Uh, but I know before we before we wrap, Amir, I want yeah. you to get a chance to talk about a woman on the outside. I know you've been talking. Uh, I know you've been working. That's something you worked on. It's an amazing project. Yeah. I know we're trying to have um one of the members on it on on the Crystal. podcast itself, Crystal. Yeah. So talk so, about it. I'm I'm one little teeny 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 person. Like I'm I came on at the end. So yeah. it's just a beautiful documentary. Um it's called A Woman on the Outside. It's on PBS right now. Um and there's also it's also on YouTube on the World TV channel. Um mm -hmm. their YouTube. It's a beautiful film about a woman from Philadelphia um named Crystal Bush. And it really follows her journey. It started as a photojournalist project. Um it was a project called everyday incarceration and it was talking about just how many incarcerated people there are in the united states like we are the most incarcerated country in the world and but what are the stories of the people behind the incarceration and like great photojournalism project they ended up meeting crystal crystal had uh, she used to have and it was a 
beautiful service called Bridging the Gap. It was a van service that took people to see their loved ones up at the prisons because our prisons, especially in the Philly area, they're all in the mountains, they're hours away. So people would pay a little money, you know, to go see their loved ones. And um, Crystal, and, and so she when she met the women, because they came out, the um, two directors, they came to her van services, um, like, a, I guess like a barbecue, like in a the park. They had like a celebratory thing um, for the company, like an anniversary thing for the company. And then she was like, no, you should come if you want to hear more stories. Like cause she, her own story is, is in depth where her father and her older brother were incarcerated. And while her brother was incarcerated, Crystal was raising her nephew. Mm. But she told them, okay, this this barbecue was one thing, but you should come to the bus to meet a lot of the women. And so they would come, well, I said the van. So they would come take the rides and talk to the women. And then they discovered, actually, she's the story. Mm. And we're looking at generational incarceration. And it's really about how families get in externally incarcerated. How the a lot of times, you know, we have women in prison, but the male prison population is much higher. And the women in their lives are the ones who are holding down the family, going up on a, when you go in those vans. And even when you go to the visit, like for people who have visited loved ones in prison, like I have before in the past, the visiting room is almost all women and children. Mm. There's a few guys and homies, but it's all women and, you know, their children and, and the males are usually some of the kids at, at various ages and stages of their life. Right. But it really is like it's so many women on the outside and how a, per, a loved one's incarceration can affect them. But Crystal's story is, it's a, it's a, I'm telling you, this doc is beautiful. Yeah. It's times where I once um, was hanging out with a guy and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I got this film. Da-da. He's like, oh, yeah, it's about, I said, oh, yeah. So I, I, I show it on YouTube mm-hmm. and then it just played. He watched the whole thing. It's like wow. once you start, you can't stop. That's and I remember great. he was he was tearing up. He said, "Why you got me watching this film? It's sad." I said, "You want me to turn it off?" He said, "No, it's so good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was crying, said, shedding some little thug tears. But yeah, it's, it's a beautiful film. I, all I did on the project really was um, because I mean, I'm proud proud cousin. My mm-hmm. cousin Kiara Jones, she's the lead producer on it and the Shut lead up, writer. Kiara. Yeah, Kiara's, oh my God, brilliant. That's my film guru. Like, that's my main mentor in this film game. But she had hit me up a couple years ago, like, I got this project. It's a a Philly project. And she's like, it's a woman, Crystal Bush. And I'm like, oh my God, Crystal, I know Crystal. And so I came in at that stage of, like, reviewing footage, like, reviewing the cut, giving notes, and that. And then it turned into, um, I'm in a special thanks but then when it and my son actually produced the song that plays in one of the um the scenes so he's like the soul the soul music uh mm. credit Elohim Smith and then um I was producing the um the receptions for when it did its premiere here in Philly and then we just did when it hit broadcast we did like a um a screening and reception and talk back and everything but yeah it's it's a beautiful film and i mean that was something too we we recorded since then. I went to ABFF um, twenty twenty two. Yeah. On some like you know just going to go yeah. and be amongst the community, and I ran into so many of my like great film friends and stuff. And then everybody had to go. The directors left. Crystal, who's the subject of the doc, who will be on Disruptors and the Code Share soon. Um, she had to go, and Kiara was producing a, um like a live filming in another part of Florida. In Jacksonville, and um, at for Futurism Experience, matter of fact, she mm-hmm. um she left to do that. So she was like, you know, will you represent our film at the awards? And I was like, okay. And then she was like, yeah, you know, because just just so you could talk the tape. I said, well, what did you want to? What you want me to say when we when it wins Best Doc? And she was like, mm-hmm. you think it's going to win? And I said, I know it's going to win, and it won. So then I did the acceptance speech and stuff. So for that, like the winner's circle, my picture was everywhere. And I was just like, but I was a proud cousin accepting that mm-hmm. award and reading off their remarks and stuff. And speaking of Afrofuturism experience, for the 2024 Afrofuturism experience in Jacksonville, Florida, um, it was the weekend right before, it was like, I guess we call it um, Juneteenth weekend, right yeah. before the 15th, was a live event. And I was the host mm. of the... It was like the fashion and like, you know, so I was like the on stage host. Mm-hmm. So we be we be doing so I be feeling like I'm a Man, odd job creative. I knew once I, I, I opened up that, that that door, I was like, she's gonna remember a bunch of things that she did. Cause yeah. you've been you've been busy. You first of all, you were also you did the uh 
Is it the Rock Nation thing that you were the yeah, voice of God Yeah, I did for? a voiceover. And it's, it's funny. On. I think we were on the anniversary of that when Come they did on. the first um, Rock Nation produced it. It was the mm-hmm. first a- inaugural um, United Justice Convention. Talk about I it. I was but... the, the live voiceover artist there for the day. Um, so it's on YouTube. I guess we have I did the... I, I'm so terrible with like posting because this needs to all be on like my Instagram and my mm-hmm. um LinkedIn. But I was basically quote unquote the voice of God that day doing all the yeah. announcements and the pitchings and the changing of the segments and stuff and introducing everyone from Charlemagne to um, you know, just everybody. It was Soledad O'Brien. It was it was it was really a great event and it was so enlightening because yeah. It was all like reform. It was all the great organizations that are fighting for social justice. Mm. And it basically was, yeah, it was a convention of, of all for them to be there in like a symposium to just really talk about what's next yep. on the forefront of, you know, the justice movement and prison reform, criminal justice reform, um, and what's, what's needed. And it just really is, it was a room full of, stakeholders i would say thought leaders and stakeholders everyone from like yo Gotti, talking about you know the prison system where he's from to um ben crump it was it was a lot of that it just was like power building they were really yeah. you know people who are really on the front lines of Dude. trying to get you know legislation changed and bills passed so that we they can stop not criminalize every aspect of american life Mm-hmm. As the Republicans are trying to do with mm-hmm. trying to reelect, I want to. So I'm going to say this on the podcast, but anyway, but I want to see if we can get like a a, a content creator who's uh, currently cur- covering the election and all that stuff to come on the podcast and talk about what that looks like. I think that'd be cool, and I would love to see if you know want to know if our listeners want to hear something like that as well. So yeah. use that comment feature. Let us know. We can we can read those joints. So let us know if you actually want you want that on the podcast or who you might want to see on here too. Yeah. You know, yeah. Let us know because we yeah. we open to it. We open to it. Absolutely. It could be virtual. We could, you know. Hey, let's, Riverside. Exactly. <laughs> listen. <laughs> so that is. Listen, y'all. I, we appreciate y'all for bearing with our our our, our hiatus, our absence, as we both grown as individuals Yo. and creatives. What? One last thing. Oh, go Don't ahead. Be forgetting. We turned um, a thirty-minute episode into to hours and change. I'm proud of us. I'm gonna say that right really? now. I'm proud of us. I'm gonna say, do we chop it in half and put two? No. Nah. Um, <laughs> we we received um oh, Lake Music City. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. About- we we ended up getting um a grant via Rec Philly, mm-hmm. WRTI, and WXPN um Shout under the Black Music City um grant program. And so we have a really, we're going to have, it's, it's going to kind of be like a capsule season. It'll be, we'll be releasing it in between our normal mm-hmm. episodes, mm-hmm. but it's black music city. is basically like they were honoring the black music legacy of Philadelphia. And so we are having on people who we consider like ultimate disruptors mm-hmm. in the culture, creative, whose creative journeys have changed music forever. So black Philadelphians, who disrupted the music industry and it was never the same after them. And mm. our very first guest, we already, oh man, this is, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he's a Titan of industry. Yeah. Um, we talked with Mr. Kenny Gamble. Mm-hmm. Um, he, it's, it's kind of like when you think of Philly music and soul, it begins with him. It begins with Kenny Gamble, Gamble and Huff. Gamble and Huff, I'm sorry, Mr. Huff. Yeah, yeah. But, but Kenny and, and the Mighty Three, Gamble, mm-hmm. Huff, and Bell. and Bell. And it was, man, a great episode, so enlightening. And boy, it was an honor, a, a, a it, true, it, true honor. It, yeah. that was, that's a moment in history I will not forget. I will never forget that. Yeah. We got some special things for y'all. I, I'm the, the the patience. We promise you the patience that you've had for us will will not be in vain. We got some really cool people that we are have lined up to talk to and creatives to share with. Some actual some other creatives we're doubling back on because they have grown and done some really cool things. And we're excited to talk talk to them about their growth. But man, disruptors is going to be you know leveled up again, and we just appreciate y'all for listening. Um, so I guess our, our little closing, we're still kind of refining it, but if you do not already make sure you subscribe to the podcast, follow us on our social platforms at disruptors ITC on Instagram. And we have a TikTok that we're going to be working on. It's at disruptors ITC as well. You're basically going to see the same thing on both on YouTube. 
Mike J Media. Subscribe to the page. You'll see our podcast, other podcasts, all the old head content. Anything you're kind of looking for is going to be there. So yeah. make sure you check us out. You can also find me and Amir on social media. You'll see us on there too. But man, just make sure you support, show some love. Episodes will be coming out. We'll be talking on a weekly basis. And we are so excited to get back in community with our fellow creatives. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next time. See y'all next time.